Hi and welcome to MRTV Live, episode number seven. As you all know, MRTV Live is the weekly live stream here on Mixed Reality TV in which I'm going to tell you about all the latest news in VR and AR. So this week, we're going to talk about my personal struggle with the HTC customer service. It's going to be very, very interesting, believe me. Then we're going to talk about the price of the upcoming HTC Vive Pro. There are quite some rumors out there and it seems like that price could be the price that is going to be the real one. Then we're going to talk about the performance of the upcoming standalone device from Oculus, the Oculus Go. There also have been some interesting news about that. And we're going to talk about lots of software launches, one of them being Moss for PSVR. So it's going to be an incredible show. So happy that you're here with me. And well, let's have a good time together for the next probably 90 minutes. Coming up. Yeah. Hi and welcome here at Mixed Reality TV at MRTV Live. My name is Sebastian Ang and if this is your first time here and you are just as excited about VR and AR as me, then subscribe now and click the bell button so you don't miss anything. Yes, welcome here to MRTV Live number seven, already episode number seven. Each week these episodes are coming and actually this is really the highlight of this channel, these live news. I love them and I love to spend time with you guys in this live stream. So for all of you who are not watching this live, you can simply have a look into the description below. I'm going to time code all of the topics that I'm going to talk about. So you don't have to sit through the whole show, but you can kind of cherry pick whatever interests you the most. But I can tell you, it is really kind of interesting to simply stick to the whole live stream because we have this interaction with people and it's very, very nice. Well, at least I think it's nice. And looking at the view numbers, it seems like you also enjoy these shows. So again, hopefully today I can we can make 50 concurrent live viewers. They would be incredible. If you know anybody who is excited about VR and AR, why don't you just um, share this link now? Share it on your Facebook or Twitter and tell everybody that now they can hear about some interesting news about the Vive Pro, about my struggle with the HTC customer service. Probably that's going to be really the most important thing today. And um, yeah, all other interesting stuff. So share it uh, with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, other social networks. Tell your significant others to watch the show. Tell your children to turn on their phones and watch it. Would be incredible if today we can get over 50 concurrent live viewers. Yeah, exactly. So again, for all the uh, people who are not live, everything is time coded in the description below. And uh, well, let me tell you about the special thing about this show for all the people who are watching MRTV live for the first time. This show is not only about me telling you about the news. This show is about me telling you about the news and discussing them with you. Exactly. I'm discussing the news with you, the people who are watching this live. Yeah. So, and how does it work? Well, you simply go to the MRTV Discord server, the great free resource for everybody who wants to discuss interesting topics about VR and AR and chat with me and chat with the MRTV community. Simply go there by clicking on the link in the description below. And um, yeah, you, you can um, go there and find the live stream channel. I've just opened it. And yeah, and there you can simply chat with me and simply write at Sebastian. And then I will see that is that um, your message is for me. And I'm going to read it and probably I'm going to read it out. <laughs> and we're simply going to talk about some exciting topics together. So this show is not just about me telling you the news. It's about us discussing the news. And yeah, hi to all. Hi to Brandon. Hi to ISAS for the win. Hi to Admiral Akbar. Let's do this. Yeah, and we already have 39 viewers. And Katy is also there or Kat. I don't know how to pronounce that. So please, we are 39 viewers. We only need 11 viewers more to reach my goal of 50 concurrent viewers. So invite people. That would be so incredible. And yeah, so I think we can go to the first news item probably. Uh... 
I just needed a sip from my adult beverage. <laughs> ZK Nightlight, exactly. Hi. Hi, thanks for press. Good to have you here, I think, for the first time. Brandon also enjoys that. <laughs> Brandon, all the best to you in Australia. Good to have you here. And um, yeah, great. Also, for all the people who are in the YouTube chat, hi, good to see, good to have you too. Why don't you come over to the Discord server chat? Because it is really, for me, it's more convenient to read the chat only in one place. And um, it is very good. <laughs> Admiral Akbar, I, I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm just having my adult beverage. No idea what you're talking about. So... <laughs> So yeah, it's pretty awesome, isn't it? <laughs> okay, good. So please, all of you who are in the YouTube chat, would be awesome if you come over to the MRTV Discord server. It is really an awesome, awesome experience to be there, an awesome community. And the great thing is we also chat there when there's no live show. So we're chatting all the time. And it's a really awesome community, friendly people and very helpful people. And I'm so glad that I started this. It's so nice. Right, guys? What do you think? Is it great? MRTV Discord server for the win or what? <laughs> okay. Okay, guys. Okay. So, yeah, it really is a great community. Admiral Akbar. And... <laughs> You guys, no idea what you're talking about here with the sound. I have no idea. Okay, but now let's talk about. <laughs> let's let me change now um, to the news. Okay, so I have to put this away. And oh, today we're going. We have quite a number of news. Quite some news here. Now let's talk about the very first topic. And it's like a topic that has really um, caught my attention because it's about me and HTC. So if you know, if you watch this channel, then of course you know everything about it already. But for all the people who are watching this show for the first time, it is about the HTC customer service. I had no idea about how the HTC customer service was like, but I made my own experiences. So what happened? Well, I destroyed my HTC Vive. I destroyed it by playing a game, by playing Sprint Vector. I was sweating, as you know, I was sweating and I was like playing Sprint Vector a lot. And well, suddenly um, it couldn't track anymore and it was all gray within the glasses. And it, I was so, I was so shocked that it would break so easily. It's I did sweat, yes, but I did wipe off the sweat all the time, and um, yeah, I was I was really like like a bit shocked because the Vive was only two month old or two two and a half three month old, so very new. And as you know, the Vive is not cheap, right? Six hundred and ninety nine euros. So that was really not a good feeling. So um, I thought, okay, now is the perfect time to check out how good the customer service works. And um, I had read like super horror stories about the customer service, that they don't care about you and that you have to run after them. And it's really not a good customer service. That's what I read. But well, I had never made any bad experience with them. Okay, uh, I didn't have any experiences with them and I checked it out. So. If you watch the video, then you know what, what happened. Well, I sent in the HTC Vive. No, I no, I chatted with them on Vive.com. They have like a, a live hotline. And so, well, they had me exchange the cables and reinstall the USB driver, nothing worked. And then they also came to the conclusion, something must be wrong with the headset. And they, they sent me the, the stickers for UPS. I could send it in for free and I sent it in and I was super happy. As you can remember, I made a video about it, like um, sweat broke my HTC Vive. I was super happy because they told me in five days, your HTC Vive will be back and everything is going to be awesome. Okay, great. And uh, yeah, but then the, the unfortunate stuff began. And that's exactly what I 
talk about in this video that you can see here. My experience with HTC Vive customer service, a nightmare, find out why. So three days, um, like a couple of days in, I got an email, they want 204 euros from me for repairing the device. And I can choose either I pay that money, the 204 euros and they repair it, or I pay 45 euros and they send it back to me in its not repaired state. So they have, it still until this moment in time, they're holding my HTC Vive hostage. I can choose either they repair it for 204 euros, which is 250 US dollars. For that price, you can buy a new Lenovo Explorer or um, yeah, pay 45 euros and get it back in its unrepaired state. And I must tell you guys, this really got me very, very unhappy. It really got me angry. Probably you could tell from my from from this channel that uh, yeah, I'm a very balanced guy. I'm, I I very seldomly get angry. Very relaxed, easygoing guy. But I must honestly tell you, I got angry for these kind of things when I believe that customers are treated in a terrible way. For these kind of things, I get angry when big corporations think they can do everything with you and give you really, really bad customer service after you've paid a premium price of 699 euros. So, wow, I was really unhappy about this. And well, as you can see from the video, if you have not watched it yet. So, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Free Sebastian's vibe, exactly, hashtag. Very, very unhappy experience. And you know what, actually, um, more things happened than I could tell in that video. That video is 11 minutes long. Originally it was like 20 minutes long because there's many more stuff that happened, but I cut it, I cut it out because it would have been too long. So um, it was super tough to get a hold of somebody at HTC who would call me. I tried really hard to get somebody on the line from HTC. Then I got an employee on the line and he told me that they can do nothing about it. He had talked to the uh, repair place in Romania. They said, no, um, they cannot repair it for free. It's not under the warranty. They have oxide marks there and it clearly shows there is um, some liquid damage. And yeah, I sweat into it. It's There's no chance that they would repair it for free. And you know what? Now I would like to use this chance um, to... <laughs> I would like to use this chance to tell you a bit more details, some, some stuff that I couldn't tell you in the video. And I would like to say hello to Steven live from California. That is incredible. Hi, Steven. Good to have you here. Yeah, so I got this person on the line and he told me there's nothing uh, we can do about it. No, he had already talked to his superior and they would not do it for free. It's not under warranty. No chance. And um, yeah, then I told them, okay, you know what? I think this is a terrible service. And you know why I'm angry? I'm angry because I used the Vive for what it's intended for. I used it for playing a game. And as I also said in the video, there are lots of games that make you sweat. It is, it is like intended use, right? There's Box VR, there is um, Sprint Vector. There are like lots of games who make you sweat. So, and there's no kind of notice whatsoever that the Vive is so fragile. That is the thing. There's no, no, no kind of notice whatsoever. I think there should be a notice like, okay, if you break your Vive because of sweat, you are on your own, even though you paid 300 or 400 euro more than if you would have bought uh, a, a Windows mixed reality device. Right? Guys, what do you think about that, right? Don't you think there should be at least a notice or something very clear that do not sweat into the HTC Vive? I think there should be like a very, very clear notice if they don't repair it for free. So there's no notice whatsoever. And also I didn't believe that it is actually so fragile. Anyways, so I told that employee on the phone, okay, I have to make a video about this. Um, I think that's really terrible customer service for 699 euros. I, I bought this, I sweat into it and it's dead now and I'm on my own. That sucks. And then the guy told me 
yeah, okay. I don't care if you do that video. I don't care if your video hurts HTC. It's like, what? Unbelievable. So I was just like what I also said in the video, flabbergasted. Um, but then what I did not um, show in the video is that I really tried very, very hard to get a manager on the phone, a manager of this guy that I talked to, somebody who cares about HTC's, HTC's um, standing or their reputation. And it was so unbelievable tough to get anybody on the line. So I told this guy, please get somebody on the line. I give you my telephone number, tell the person to call me back or I'm going to tell everybody in a video. The guy said, okay, of course I didn't get a call back. Nothing, nothing. Then um, the next day I went to the chat. Again, I said, okay, um, yesterday you wanted to call me back but nothing happened. Please tell your manager to, get, to give me the call now or at least today because really guys I'm going to tell everybody it's going to be very hurtful for HTC so I give you ample chance to give me a good customer service here I give you ample chance to stop me from telling everybody yeah to make this right uh, they said okay you know um, Sebastian 100% 100% our manager is going to call you within an hour okay so I said, okay, great. I wait um, one hour, nothing happens. I wait the whole day, nobody calls me, nothing, zero. Even though they told me in the chat, 100% somebody is gonna call you, okay. <laughs> Guys, now there's some part that's going to be super funny. Then on the next day, I get a package. I get a UPS package from HTC. Romania, so the place where I sent my HTC to, you know, my, my headset. So this is something now that I didn't um, that I didn't tell you guys in the video. So I got a package from HTC from UPS, and I thought like, wow, awesome! They have repaired it. You know what? They want to kill that topic. They they simply sent me the HTC Vive now repaired, so that I don't make a video about them. So they do care about the reputation. Yeah, that's what I thought. I had that. I had that. Um, I had that uh, email notification from UPS. Okay, um, today there's going to be um, there's going to be a package for you from HTC Romania, and I was like, okay, cool, cool. They want to. They really want to make things right now. So, what do you guys think was in that package? What do you guys think? <laughs> Admiral Akbar thinks it's a box full of dog poo. <laughs> a Windows MR headset, Brandon. Yes, <laughs> that would be funny. No, in. <laughs> this is so. This is so funny, guys. This is really extremely funny. So, in that box from HTC, I open it. Yeah, I and then what did I see? What? They sent me back the cable, only the cable, only the cable of the HTC Vive. So, <laughs> so um, they had told me in the chat, please send us the HTC Vive and the cable. You know, the cable that connects the HTC Vive with the breakout box. And they, I don't know why they sent me back the cable. So just this cost of sending me back the cable with with UPS, probably that cost them 20 euros. I have no idea why they sent me back the, only the cable. That, that doesn't make sense. They asked me They asked me for 45 euros if I just want everything back, just for the logistic cost. Why don't they keep the cable and send everything back together? So they not only have a shitty customer service, they are also stupid as fuck to, to say it honestly. Exactly, might as well have been dog poop. <laughs> Admiral Akbar says. I mean, I mean, really, why? Why do they send me the cable? It costs them money. It, it doesn't make sense for, I, can anybody in the chat tell me why would anybody, why would they send me back only the cable? Why can't they store it next to my broken HTC Vive 
and send me back everything together and save themselves 20 euros for sending that via express from UPS. And I would, I, while I'm ranting here, I want to say thank you. We have reached, we have reached the 50 concurrent viewers record. We have 59 viewers here. Thank you. That, that is incredible. That is really, truly incredible. Thank you for watching this live show. Thank you for watching a German guy rant about SGC. 61 viewers. That, that is unbelievable. 61 concurrent viewers is great. Thank you. It seems you, you like you like to watch me rant about HTC. Yeah. Yeah, so 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 what the heck? <laughs> that was their way of getting back at you. <laughs> <laughs> That's messed up. No, no, really. That is really messed up. I mean, why? I don't understand it. Do, do they want to show me like, hey, you know what? Fuck you. <laughs> Here's your fucking cable. I don't get it. I really don't get it. This customer service center in Romania is unbelievable. And also the, the call center in Poland, yeah? This is... Incredible. At that moment, I still had not talked to the manager, right? But at at that point, they were already super aware that I'm a VR YouTuber and that I have kind of an audience to tell the world about them. So I was kind of surprised that they don't care about the reputation of their own company, like the guy had told me explicitly on the phone. So, yeah. <laughs> Push the button. They want to tell you that it was the cable that was broke. Yeah, perhaps. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and Doss says, I just got my new Vive, but it smells like shit. Oh god. <laughs> okay, anyways, the story is not at the end. Yeah, so the next day I go to the Vive. I go to the Vive.com and I chat with the same people again. And I told them, guys, yesterday you told me that 100% your manager is going to call me, right? And I didn't get a call. What's the matter? And I said, okay, guys, if I don't get a call until tonight, I'm going to make a video about this experience and I'm going to call out your names. I know your names, yeah, because it says in the chat and I also know the name of your manager because <laughs> when I was talking with the guy who um, who said he doesn't care about HTC, I asked him, what's the name of your manager? And he said, yeah, I cannot tell you her name, but I can only tell you her fir first name and he told me the first name of that manager. Yeah, so I said, okay, I'm going to call out your names. 10 minutes later, my phone rings. <laughs> no, really, 10 minutes later, my phone rings and it's that manager. And like super unfriendly. Yeah, um, da, da, da. you wanted a, you want a call. Like, like really unfriendly. It's incredible how unfriendly this lady was. And then I asked her, okay, tell me your name now, your last name, I, um, with who am I speaking? Like super fast, she told me her name, some Polish name, very tough to understand. And I asked again, what's your name? I didn't get that. And yeah, it was nearly, nearly, you cannot really get it, but uh, I can understand why she doesn't want me to know her name. <laughs> super, super unfriendly, unbelievable. And uh, yeah, I told her the story again and she said like, yeah, no, there's nothing we can do. It has liquid damage. And um, yeah, liquid damage, not good. So cannot do anything. And then I told them again, I think it's really unreasonable. I, re I just played it. I didn't put it into water. I didn't go out with it in a rain thunderstorm, nothing. I played a game and it shouldn't be like that. And then I'm, I reiterated that, yeah, I'm going to make this public. So um, she said like, okay, um, probably I can, I can talk to my superior and perhaps we can make an exception, but not sure about it. And it was like two days ago and she told me she's gonna 
get back to me this day or the next day. I had never heard from, from that lady again. Never, never. So what did I, what did I do? What I thought, yeah, you know what? I make that video now. I make that video now. I tell everybody about that experience, no matter if I get the money, if I get, if I, if I get, uh, if I don't have to pay that 200 euros or if I am gonna get it and only get it because I'm going to make it public. So I thought, no, I must tell the world anyways, because it would be like a bribe, right? If, if they, if they give this to me, the 200 euros, and I, did, I don't tell you guys, it's, it feels like they, they bribe me, not telling the truth. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to tell you guys anyways. And that's exactly what I did. Morty, it was the call center is in Poland and the repair center is in Romania. Good. Yeah. Admiral thinks it's the right thing to do. Yeah, thank you, Admiral. Anyways, the story <laughs> is not over yet. It's gonna, it's gonna get really interesting, guys. It's gonna get really interesting. <laughs> ZK Nightlight says, perhaps their thought is there is no good or bad advertising, but simply advertising. So they are okay with you telling the world the story. That's so sad. No, I really don't think so. That is really, that's going to, that's going to hurt them. I'm going to tell you why in a moment. So, um, yeah, okay. So I made that video that you probably saw in my channel, on my channel, the video here. And you know what? It's one of the videos that got the most traction of all my videos. We have 19,000, more than 19,000 views after like, not even two days. That is really, really good for my channel. That is really, really unbelievably good. And I mean, like, this is crazy. I'm, I was just thinking like, how much does this, this single video now, how much does it um, hurt them? Let's say, okay. Let's say from these 19,000 VR, 19,000 VR fans, Probably 10% of them were considering to get the Vive Pro or the Vive, right? 10%, probably more, but let's be really conservative. Let's be really conservative. Let's say 10% were thinking about getting the Vive Pro. Yeah, that is like um, 1,900, yeah? And let's say 50% of them are now not going to buy it. Yeah, 50%. So 950 people are not going to buy the Vive or the Vive Pro. Let's say they make 500 euros of revenue from that Vive Pro or from that Vive. So times 500. So probably that one video that I did cost them half a million US dollars. That is pretty crazy, right? That is pretty unbelievable. So because that shitty people, I mean, that shitty support, probably they're great people, but they don't like the job. Probably because that really unfriendly people at that customer service, because they are not ready to pay, to, 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 to help me repair that, that problem, that $200 problem, would actually for them probably only cost $50, 50 euros to fix or less. Now they they have half a million loss, right? Isn't that crazy? They've earned it, Brandon says, yes. But I really think that that's crazy, I think. That's really crazy because they do bad customer service and it's gonna hurt them. It's gonna hurt them plenty. And the thing was, I was so fair. I told them early, guys, I have this YouTube channel. I'm going to tell everybody about it. Yeah, but I even shouldn't have to say that, guys, you know? Anyways, the story gets better. Uh, yeah, anyways, so this, this really gets me a bit um, excited. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that is pretty crazy. And um, I make this video. 
I put it online and it gets traction fast. It gets really, really good traction. And I post it and I, I post it on Twitter and I tag HTC and now guess what happens. Guys, guess what happens next. Within one hour, within one hour, guess what happens. Oops. <laughs> Admiral Abbas says, suddenly they, suddenly they call me and say, we will send you a, a new Vive for free. That is correct, Admiral Akbar. <laughs> Oops, I forgot. To, oh no. Something wrong with my adult beverage. Okay. <laughs> yes, Commander, you're right. So, um. No, let me tell you, let me tell you the the whole story. It is like this. So, I I post that I post that video which now has nearly twenty thousand views, and I get an email from HTC Vive from from the US, from Seattle, from from their um, US headquarters, and it says like, okay. Um, could you give us some more information? Could you give us the, the serial number of your Vive and so on and so forth? Is that possible? And yeah, I replied, yes, here's, here's the serial number. And I also wrote in that email that I'm very unhappy about the service and so on and so forth. And uh, yeah, the customer service um, or the, the person from, from the headquarters replies, they're sorry about that, but you know what our our customer service in Europe is kind of tied. Their hands are tied because of our warranty. And he sends me a link to his warranty, to the, to the warranty of the HTC Vive. And it says in that warranty, it says like, okay, they cannot pay, for, uh, they cannot repair um, HTC Vives which have um, a liquid damage. And you know what? The interesting thing is that HTC has actually changed their warranty. In the beginning, it was clearly in that warranty. It stated like, okay, they don't repair or, or, or vibes are not under warranty for liquid damage other than um, sweat, sweating or pres perspiration or I don't, I forgot the English name. And um, you know what? So in the beginning, in the first warranty, of the HTC Vive, sweating was in the warranty. But you know what? They found out that actually perspiration, perspiration, exactly. But they found out that actually the HTC Vive is super fragile and that it cannot take sweat. So you know what? They have changed the warranty. They've changed the warranty and they deleted that part about the perspiration so now it just says liquid damage is not under the warranty so you know what they know this is an issue they know very clearly that sweating in the HTC Vive is an issue and instead of like um, standing for their own design flaw and helping people like me who paid lots of money to get that device they simply um, let the customer bear the burden. They simply let the customer bear the burden of paying for their own design flaw that they know about. So I don't even want to know how many HTC Vive customers have actually, um, yeah, actually have have had this problem and had and paid with their own money because they designed that device in a bad way. Isn't that incredibly terrible? They changed their warranty because they know that their HTC Vive has a design flaw. Isn't that unbelievable? What do you guys think about that? That they changed the warranty to let the customer bear the consequences of their design flaw. What do you guys think about it? Please do let me know in 
the description. <laughs> in the description, no, in the live chat, of course. Guys, guys, guys. I have to open another adult beverage, I think. Guys, today we're not getting over that topic. It's crazy. But it's just so interesting. Okay. Right, so... But it's not over yet. Chris says, I had a run-in with a Romanian outsource company, not with HTC. But still, Chris, it is still HTC's fault because they outsourced it. And Fulio says, yeah, he has to deal with HTC USA and they are also not so nice. Okay, but anyways, so he told me that about the warranty and their hands are tied. But you know what, who, who tied their hands? It's HTC with the very clear and obvious um, problem that they know about the, the problem of the HTC Vive and that they're simply relaying that problem to the customers and they let them pay for it. So I, I, I replied to that email and I wrote them the following, you know, let me read that to you. Let me read that to you. Let me show you. I can also show you another, show you that. That looks better. Let me find that email. Okay. I think that's, that's interesting. What I wrote to them. Okay. This tonight is the MRTV versus HTC Vive customer service show. Okay, guys, let me read what I wrote to them. Okay, so um, the guy told me, I told them, okay, you have to improve the design, it sucks. And then the guy wrote to me, yeah, it's not so easy to, to make it waterproof and stuff. And I told him, okay, hi, name. I understand that is that it is a challenge to develop consumer electronics. However, when you fall short of creating a device that can withstand its intended usage and as a result simply let the consumers bear the consequences by coming up with an ill-fated warranty policy, you have a big problem on your hands. A problem that is now backfiring at you. If, it, if I was in your shoes and I'm now assuming I'm speaking to HTC, you should do the following. Change your ill-fated warranty policy that punishes customers for buying your product. If your engineers in Romania find out that damage is most likely caused by sweat and not by submerging the unit in water, repair it free of charge. It will come you cheaper than this PR debacle that you are running into right now as you read these lines. Especially taking into consideration that you have the launch of the Vive Pro on your table. A prosumer device. Will there be prosumer customer service? Lots of people might question this after they learn about my experience. Or you can go for the second um, solution. Have a warning message pop up for games that will make the player sweat. Something the likes of attention, you play this game on your own risk. Sweat will easily damage the HTC Vive and this is not covered by our warranty. I told them I think it's a bad solution um, and nobody likes these messages but people are not aware of it. You have it somewhere like deep in your warranty that you don't cover um, liquid damage but it's a shame. But I mean now everybody knows. Thanks to the video and um, thanks to 
thanks to other people who also got this problem, but I think thanks to this to this video that I did, I think it is now in everybody's mind that these things break because of sweat and that you don't pay for it, HTC. Or uh, my third solution, come up with an updated Vive design that prevents the Vive from breaking this easily and allow free repairs for old Vives. I think that's also a good solution. Okay. Okay, then I wrote, um, if I was you, I would escalate this case to your higher management. The video I made about my experience with your customer service is gaining lots of traction fast. I never got as many views as with this one in such a short time. I suppose by the time you get off work, it will reach 10k or 10k views already. And we're now at 20k views. <laughs> and it cost them probably half a million US dollars already. You should act quickly on this and make this right. Not just for me, but for all your customers who've paid a premium to use the Vive. Yeah. Thank you, Brandon. So, yeah. Very, very interesting. So, um, yeah, anyways, I, I would like to update you then about um, the latest. Um, yeah, so then I got a reply from him and he said like, okay, um, he's going to do everything to make sure that I get my wife back repaired. He's going to um, speak with the people in Europe to make it happen. But if the people in Europe don't get it done until Monday morning, they're going to send me a Vive, a new Vive from the United States of America. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, this is how the, the, the service kind of should have been in the first place. But I do have the feeling that this kind of had something to do with my 20,000 views video. And I believe if the small man on the streets, the hardworking normal person would have tried to speak with this task force from HTC Vive, I don't think that they would get this kind of service. What do you guys think? Do you guys think that if the normal consumer, like you, if you have the sweat problem, do you think you have you would have gotten this kind of email support from HTC USA? Please do let me know in the chat now. Brennan says, absolutely not. Push the button says, no chance. So I really believe this would never happen. You know, when I didn't post the video, I'm telling you guys, I had no chance to, to get even that manager in Poland on the phone. It was just after I told them I have a channel and I'm going to call out their names that I got that unfriendly call. But if you, if you arrive, you arrive, if you arrive that you bought for $699 or euros, if your wife breaks because of sweat, I'm telling you, they're going to be super tough on you. They're going to tell you, hey, that will cost you 200 euros to repair or $250. And if you don't want to do that, okay, pay 45 euros and we're going to send it back to you broken. So I don't believe this would ever happen. So Fulio is doing a credit card chargeback. Yeah, that makes sense too. Yeah, of course. You see, for Fulio, nobody called them back. Nobody. He's alone. Because Fulio doesn't have a, a VR channel. So, and that's why I'm making this video. And that's why I'm telling you guys the truth. Even though 
Now, probably um, HTC hates me. <laughs> probably I'm not going to get uh, Vive Pro yeah, to show you guys how great it is. But you know what? On this channel, you, the subscribers, you are my bosses. It's you that I care about when doing reviews, when, when telling you the truth. And I like that much better than being paid by Vive or being paid by, I don't know, by anybody. So I'm feeling responsible or I report, I report to you. I don't want to report to HTC or to any other company. So I'm telling you what is going on here. And even if now HTC hates me and the next time it's another company is going to hate me if I do a, a, an honest review, I don't care because I report to you and I don't report to others. And yeah, so that's what I wanted to say. So now the next question, of course, is the next question, of course, is um, how good is the Vive Pro going to be in terms of liquid protection or sweat protection is it going to be better than the vive i don't know so i have until now i have um, read lots of um first hands-on experiences everybody is super super happy with the device and um <laughs> brandon who's going to be the one to test it yeah probably it's gonna be me um so I've read lots of um, hands-on reviews now from other YouTubers and they seem to be really happy until now. And it, it, the device looks good. And I'm telling you guys, I'm going to review the HTC Vive Pro. And um, I'm going to review the HTC Vive Pro just like as if I would have reviewed it without having this unhappy experience with HTC right now. Yeah? So if the device is awesome, I'm going to tell it to you. If the device is not awesome, I'm also going to tell it to you. So I will forget about this bad experience and I'm going to review it as if it didn't happen. But I want to know from HTC if they changed anything about this device about um, being more sweat proof because the sweat is really a huge problem if this device is going to be super expensive then well then um and it breaks so easily then they're going to have a problem a big problem especially if the customer service stays as bad as it is now so i think now we can kind of get to the next topic, which is the pr the price of the Vive Pro. So let me let me cool down a moment. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers, guys. 80 concurrent viewers thank you for thank you so much for yeah for reaching that milestone my, my goal was to get 50 concurrent viewers that is incredible but we have 80 that is really really a good number yeah so um there are rumors out there now how expensive the vive pro is going to be and these rumors are talking about just the headset without the base station so if you already have a vive then you can go just for the headset and according to those rumors it's going to cost 799 dollars so probably going to be around the same in europe a bit ex more expensive probably going to be 799 euros so um these rumors i heard them now from several sources from other YouTubers and from people <laughs> who have spoken with them. And um, yeah, so probably $799 for the Vive Pro, which is kind of expensive. And well, they already tried to warn the public with this kind of prosumer uh, word. They said the HTC Vive is going to be a prosumer device. So 
yeah, it's gonna be more expensive. So 799 euros is very, very expensive. I believe that 799 euros is a very, very tough price. And if then that device is exactly as fragile when it comes to sweat, and if their service, if their service is going to be as bad as it is now, and I don't think they are able to change their ways within a short time, then I think they're doomed. I really think it's going to be tough to tell people, you know what, um, go, pay $800 for this device, but if it breaks, you're on your own. I don't think so, because $800 is a very, very big investment. And that's without the controllers. That's without the base stations. So probably the whole thing is going to be probably um, more than $1,000. So that is really, really a lot. So that is really, really, really a lot. And if you cannot be confident about their customer service, if you can be confident that if you break it with your sweat, I really think they, not many people are gonna pick this up. Even though I'm sure it's gonna be a great device, I will test it for you guys. And we will see, we will see how good it is. But yeah, it is expensive. It is simply really, really super expensive. And um, yeah, we'll see. So again, if I can help HTC, if this video or the, the other video that I made, yeah, the, the one where I talk about their customer service, if this video can help HTC to get a better customer service, if this video can help other people who also have a broken vibe because of sweat. If that video can help them to get the service that they deserve, then I'm already happy. And then my bad experience was for a better cause for you guys, for this channel, for, yeah, then I think it was worth it that my HTC Vive broke because of sweat. And um, yeah, that, that, um, yeah, I had to go through this bad customer service experience. Well, better me than you, right? So it would be great if HTC could change their ways because if they stay like this with a very, very bad customer service, they are going to be doomed. Very, very doomed. What do you guys think? Do you agree with that or what? Okay, so ZK Nightlight says $7.99 for the Vive Pro when Odyssey is out for $3.99. How foolish. Yeah. Do you think two Odyssey is gonna sell very well because of this? Of course. ZK Nightlight, I totally agree. I think that people who are going to have the choice between Odyssey and Vive Pro, they're going to go for the Odyssey in 90% of the cases. Why? Because, well, I used it on the same game. I was playing, I was sweating into the Odyssey just as much, if not more, and I had no problems whatsoever. You can take that Odyssey anywhere. Yeah, you don't have to put up those base stations and it's pretty awesome. And I think for the normal consumer, for the normal consumer, for the people who are like me and you, they're going to go for the Odyssey. It's gonna be a tough, it's gonna be a tough call to get the Vive Pro. I still think that the super, super VR enthusiasts who, who, who don't care about spending lots of money into that hobby, they're still going to go for the Vive Pro because of the great tracking. But I think for the normal consumer, lots of people are going to go for the Samsung Odyssey. Yes. I strongly believe it because it has the same panel all the people who who have checked the vive pro say it actually looks the same and well it comes with lots, lots of benefits right that you can simply bring it anywhere yeah so i do think that lots of people are going to choose the odyssey also because they know the customer service of HTC it sucks yeah fail runner says odyssey 
Yeah, and DOS says, unfortunately, the Odyssey is not being sold in Europe. And totally agreed. That, that is really a problem. Brandon, is the tracking that much better? The tracking is better. Without a doubt, it's, it works really fine all the time. And um, however, the tracking of the Odyssey is also really good. It's really, really good. I would say the, the, the Vive is 100% and probably the Odyssey is probably somewhere at 94%. Yeah, so something like this. So something like this. Yeah, so it is definitely better, but the Odyssey's tracking is tr is really, really good. Is it worth the dollars? Yeah, if you're if you if you had a great customer service behind your back, and if you knew that they will help you, if you didn't put your HTC Vive into the bathtub, they will help you out then it is a great it is a great investment if you love vr really it's it's great but if you cannot be sure that they're going to help you out it's a problem really really a big problem yeah pinnacle rising says the odyssey is okay for me i like how simple the setup is yeah exactly just put it in and it works push the button says the thing is the hcc don't need light yes Exactly. So yeah, definitely the tracking is perfect. I really love it too. And, and I loved my HTC Vive. I loved my HTC Vive before I got in touch with the customer service. Really, really. I was a big, big fan of the HTC Vive. Yeah. Anyways, now, now I have spent like one hour talking about HTC. <laughs> that is crazy, guys. So I think today's show is going to be a bit longer. So again, for all the people who are now watching this, um, I'm reading the chat of the Discord server. So if you are in the YouTube chat and if you're wondering um, which chat I'm following, I'm following the chat of the MRTV Discord server. So simply go there, click on the link. It's a great server. And why I push that server is because it's such a great community. And actually that we're chatting there all the time, not just during live streams. So that's why I prefer the Discord server so much. So please. Go to the MFTV Discord server and find the live stream channel if you directly want to chat with me. And I'm going to read out the messages which are tagged with at Sebastian. Okay, so now let's go back to the news. Yeah, so HTC one hour. So I think today's live stream is going to be a bit longer. Hope you don't uh, mind that, but that is good. So yeah, okay, now the next news item. Oculus Rift overtakes HTC Vive in Steam survey for the first time. So the news is that every month Steam gives out some statistics and they show which headsets are being used by the users and they will give a percentage. And all the time until this month, the HTC Vive was in front, but now for the first time, the Oculus Rift was actually in front of the HTC Vive. So, well, business is going down for HTC and uh, for good reasons, right? It's so expensive and Oculus is so aggressive with their pricing. They have a really good price. So in this month, for the first time, they are in front of the Vive. And um, for percentage wise, I think, yeah, so 47% are using the Oculus Rift, 45.3% are using the Vive, and 5.36% are using the Windows Mixed Reality devices. And yeah, I think 5% for the Windows Mixed Reality devices is not bad since they are only on the market since October. So this is not bad. So we have to see how this develops over the next month. 
I believe that this number is going to get bigger. The Windows Mixed Reality devices, since the Odyssey is simply such a great choice right now. For $399, this is a great choice. And this number is definitely going to get bigger. And yeah, for HTC, I really, really think they're going to have a tough time to be able to compete because, well, they are a um, hardware company and they need to make money with their hardware. Because, yeah, they're trying now with Vive Port. But who of you is using Vive Port? Please do let me know. Who of you is using their store? Is there anybody of you? Who is using their store? Anybody, anybody using Vive port? Please do let me know in the chat. <laughs> Doors. Is there a Vive store? Yes, there is one, but nobody knows. Oxalet says, I found Vive port annoying and non-intuitive to use. Yeah. <laughs> Cat says, I don't have any VR headset, so I'm not using any store. Yeah, but are you? do you want to get a device, Cat? Never use, fully says, I never use Vive port. I don't know anybody. I've never met anybody who would use Viveport. No, never. So they are simply not doing a job good enough. Proud Dog, is Viveport more expensive than the Microsoft Store? No. But they, are, they have some kind of um, model where you pay some money and then you can get like a certain number of games every month. Anyways, nobody's using it, right? So I really don't know anybody who's using the Vive port service. Oh my God. This stream, today's stream is really, really not, uh, is a bit tough on HTC, right? But it's just a, a simple matter of fact. They are having a hard time. Not sure if they're going to be around in five years. Let's see. Actually, I would hope they would be around because actually I really love the HTC Vive and probably the Vive Pro is awesome. I don't know yet. We will see. We will see all about that. Anyways, let's see about the next news item. Okay, now we can stop to talk about HTC. Perfect. The next news item, Microsoft Research shows haptic VR add-on that links motion controllers. Now, this is really some interesting news. So, as you know, at the moment, if we want to play some kind of shooter or anything with where we use the two controllers, we have to um, pretend we have something in our hands, right? It's a bit strange. But now, Microsoft Research shows haptic VR add-on that links the motion controllers. Let me read that out to you. So, the HTC Vive wands and Oculus Touch controllers do an amazing job of bringing our hands into VR, but they share many issues, including how to handle two-handed objects. However, a new project from Microsoft Research is addressing this issue with haptic links. Let's have a look at the video and please do let me know in the chat what you think of that device. Let me find the video. And here, here it goes. Researchers have designed numerous haptic controllers to render objects in virtual reality. However, many objects and interactions involve the coordinated use of both hands, and feedback between the hands is typically absent. We present haptic links, electromechanical connections which attach to standard VR controllers to enable intercontroller force feedback through variable stiffness actuation. In this clip, the user freely switches between dual pistols and a rifle held in both hands. Attached to their VR controllers is a haptic link. The haptic link allows for full six degree of freedom motion while shooting the pistols. However, when using the rifle, the haptic link joining the controllers becomes rigidly locked, allowing the user to handle and aim the gun like a real two-handed weapon. 
We can also render variable stiffness along a continuous range. Here, as we pull back the drawstring on a virtual bow, the hinge between these controllers becomes increasingly stiff with distance, then relaxes upon firing. To appropriately position controllers to render a new object, we introduce an input method that we call summoning. That is, the user performs a gesture which moves their controllers into the proper position, enabling our system to haptically render the object through stiffening. Here, the user can summon either a car or a motorcycle by holding their hands in the shape of a steering wheel or handlebars. We designed three haptic links capable of rendering different types of intercontroller feedback. Each haptic link attaches to an existing, unmodified VR controller. The first link is a highly articulated ball and socket chain, with a cable threaded along its length. Linear actuators mounted to the controllers pull this cable tight, pressing each ball into the neighboring socket and globally stiffening the chain in its current configuration. Our second haptic link uses a hinge composed of several interleaved layers. By compressing these layers, we increase the friction between them and create a braking force. While the hinge controls the distance between the controllers, a ball joint beneath each controller enables rotation, which is locked using an actuated set screw. Our third haptic link uses the same ball joints but has a directionally selective brake on its hinge. Small servos disengage the paws of two opposing ratchets, allowing for inward motion, outward motion, both or none. This design enables us to render walls and surfaces, such as in this interaction, where inward motion is halted as the user grasps a virtual object with both hands. These last two designs allow us to constrain particular degrees of freedom while leaving others free, such as in this example, where the controllers can move together and apart in a locked orientation to render a trombone interaction. We envision a number of extensions for these devices, such as manually grounding one controller on the body or on another surface, to enable grounded force feedback interactions on the other controller. Our paper describes the design and implementation of our haptic links, as well as interaction techniques and scenarios leveraging their capabilities. Our user evaluation shows that users can perceive many two-handed... Yeah, so this is coming from the Microsoft Research, and let me tell you, I'm a big fan of immersion, and I think this is the way to go. This is going to happen in the future. We're going to feel much more than just rumble. We're going to feel like when we like um, shoot the arrow from the bow, and we're going to feel when we kind of, yeah, use our two hands with stuff, forced feedback and haptic feedback. This is definitely without a doubt the future, and I'm really happy that Microsoft is going for this kind of research. Obviously, I totally agree with you guys. This looks not good right now. This is only research right now, but I think this has so much promise. I love it. I'm just thinking about it. Like when you play this game about, yeah, about the, the bone arrow, right? Like recently I played this game um, Apex Construct a lot. And if I had something like this, it would so much help with the immersion. It's a total game changer. I really believe in this haptic feedback and we're all going to be totally into haptics after we have watched Ready Player One later this month. So more immersion is good. I'm a big fan of this kind of um, setup and I believe something like this is going to happen uh, for the future um, VR services, for um, future VR controllers and definitely it is great. So I love this research, love that news. It's of course far from, um, it's far from being able to be sold it doesn't look good and they have three different models and stuff but it is pretty sweet i think what do you guys think please do let me know in the chat on the mrtv discord server then i also had a look at the i had a look at the youtube chat and one of you was asking jrod vr why must we verify our phone number for the discord chat so let me tell you why so um I want this Discord server to be troll free and this Discord server is so nice, so many great people there. I have never even had one single troll there, not even one. So I really love it that everybody is nice, everybody just wants to talk about VR and it's a very peaceful place and putting that there with the um, phone number um kind of thing i believe it really helps 
I really believe it helps. If some troll goes there and wants to like, um, yeah, disturb the chat, and then they have to um, put their phone number there, they're not going to do it. So that's why I'm having that uh, phone number thing in the Discord server, and I think that's a good thing. <laughs> okay. So, just to let you guys know. All right. So I think that this is very interesting news. Um, no, fail runner. Do you often get any trolls? Not at all on this Discord server. Of course, um, on the YouTube, <laughs> on the YouTube um, channel. Of course, there's like those guys who who write hateful comments and stuff, and. What can I tell you guys? It's just amusing me. I love haters. I really love haters because I think like, uh, yeah, haters are hating while I'm creating. So I love this stuff. Okay, guys, but now let me go on for, let me go on to the next news item here. So the next news item is SK Telecom will demo 5G social VR. Let me read that out to you. South Korea's largest mobile provider, SK Telecom, announced today that it will debut social virtual reality and multiple 5G demonstrations, including Hologram AI, at the 2018 Mobile World Congress booth next week. So actually it happened already. The demos will run from February 26 to March 1 in Barcelona, Spain. So um, what is this news item about? So 5G is the next big thing. And the exciting thing about 5G, of course, is going to be faster than, than 4G. <laughs> no news here. But the great thing is the latency. The latency of 5G will be super, super low. What does it mean for VR? It means that you can get your VR content, not from your mobile phone, not from your PC, but you're going to get it from the cloud. Something that I had already told you before. So instead of um, yeah, having to tether your, 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 um, your glasses to your PC or having to tether or having to put a, a mobile phone into your VR headset, you're simply having, you're going to wear a headset and it's going to be connected to the cloud via 5G and all of your games, all of your content, all of your Steam VR games are going to come from the cloud. That is how it's going to be. And this is not some, some future um, thought or some future hope. It's right in front of us. It's right in front of our doorsteps. So um, SK Telecom is showing this on, showed this already on the Mobile World Congre uh, Mo uh, MWC in Barcelona and it's here and it's going to come soon. Yeah, so very, very soon we're going to, uh, yeah, we're going to have 5G. So probably in the next few I don't know. Next few years, we're not going to talk about Steam VR anymore. We're going to talk about some other service. Who's going to stream this directly into our glasses? What do you think about it? <laughs> Randoon, no problem, no worries. That is fine. Pinnacle Rising says, no PC necessary, I'm in. Yeah. Don't worry, Randoon. That is fine. Okay. Yeah, so definitely th this is how things are going to be. We we don't need a computer anymore. We don't need a phone. Everything's gonna be in one standalone device and it's going to be pretty, pretty sweet. Anyways, there was this news item. So now let's go to the next one. And again, PSVR. It's like every week I have some PSVR news and it's always about the price going down. So 
I'm not sure. Is here anybody from the UK? If here's anybody from the UK, please say yes into the chat. Is there anybody from the UK? Please say yes into the chat. OPD, yes, Paradise DK. <laughs> Good to have you. You should go to the MRTV Discord server as well. PD, Paradise, Paradise DK. Good to have you in that live stream. I would like to tell everybody about your incredible... Oops. No, that's wrong. Sorry. I would like to tell everybody about your incredible channel. So please, everybody, check out Paradise DK. He has a great channel on YouTube, a great VR YouTuber. And yeah, check out his channel, please. So, PD, I'm not sure if you have... a. Uh, if you have a PSVR, because if you don't, now you can get a PSVR really cheap in the UK. You can get the PSVR version 2 with Super Hot and Resident Evil and VR Worlds for £299. PD says, don't even have a PS4. Okay, probably you should consider getting one because the PSVR is really big fun, especially for those... Um, exclusive games resident evil and super uh, and um yeah all these all these games which are exclusive to the psvr skyrim comes to mind it is really worth it so now they have a great price only 299 pounds so again i think they're doing everything so right sony is pushing it sony is pushing this out to everybody and I can just tell you guys, I think it is pretty incredible what they're doing. It's even though the te technology is not so much up to date anymore. I still think everybody with a PS4 should get a PSVR. Good. So this is some kind of short news, but uh, I still want to let you know about it. Not okay. All right, so let's move on now to the next news item. And the next news item is that the Oculus Go will perform significantly better than the Galaxy S7. And that's what John Carmack says. So this news item is about the performance of the Oculus Go. Oculus Go, for all of you who don't know about it yet, it's the upcoming standalone headset from Oculus only going to be $199 fantastic price and I believe that this device has everything it needs from the price to finally finally get the mass market I'm sure that this is going to sell like hotcakes now it is not as good as other um, standalone VR devices like the the upcoming daydream one but the daydream one is going to cost $399 so double the price so I'm sure most of the people will go for the Oculus Go. Couples can get it for the same price, like one um, Lenovo Mirage Solo, the Daydream one. So I'm sure people are going to go for the Oculus Go. It only has um, three degrees of freedom. And uh, recently there was the news that it only has 90 degrees FOV, but push the button. No, it was a mistake. It has 110 degrees FOV. So it was also in one of my live shows. I read that news from, I think, Android Central. I said like, oh, it has 90 degrees FOV, but no, it has 110 degrees FOV. So um, yeah, that is, this is pretty good. It's going to be a pretty awesome device, especially for people who, who just want to, to tip, to uh, like, uh, yeah, have a first kind of experience for, for VR. I'm sure lots of people are going to get it. And now about the performance of the Oculus Go. John Carmack says the performance will be significantly better than Galaxy S7. And I do have a Galaxy S7. I use it in Gear VR and that performance is pretty sweet. And again, Rendoon, it does not have 90 degrees FOV. There was a, a wrong call that I did. I read the news from Android Central. And it was wrong. It has it has 110 degrees FOV. 
Yeah, I also thought it was 90 degree, but no. So uh, yeah, it has a 90, it has 110 degrees FOV. Good. Um, so why it has um, a Snapdragon 8 to 1 processor? So that is like a processor that was in the first get uh, in the first um, Pixel devices. It is uh, around one and a half years old, but still the performance will be better than Galaxy S7 because this device does not have to spend any of its graphical powers for the for the, the mobile phone stuff because it can totally concentrate on the VR stuff. And that is pretty cool, I think. So it will be a device that will perform good enough. So what do you guys think? Are you going to buy the Oculus Go for $199? Please do let me know. I would love to know. Are you going to buy it? Katy is not going to buy it. Who wants to buy that device? So I can I can tell you guys, I'm going to buy it. Fail Runner, no. Fulio, no. Mix Star, I will get it. Okay. I think lots of people are going to get it. Lots of people are going to get it. Could be a good present. Yeah, okay. Then if you want to give that to somebody, you're right. It would be a great present. Push the button, gonna buy it. I'm gonna buy it. I'm going to review it for you. And Paradise DK says yes. PD is going to buy it for sure. That is great. Okay, good. Good. Let's go to the next news item. Oh yes. Okay. We are now we have stopped now with VR, now the AR news. Wita's concept first person shooter is really coming to Magic Leap 1. So, this news is really cool. Magic Leap 1, the upcoming AR headset from one of the most well-funded startups in history, is set to arrive sometime this year. While no real specs are known about the headset outside a few choice bits revealed during its unveiling back in December, one important factor that's been largely unresolved is, is starting to slowly materialize despite the company's insistence on complete secrecy content. Talking to Rolling Stone, Vita game shop designer and artist Greg Broadmore revealed that an upcoming first-person shooter called Dr. Grotboard's Invaders, which is slated to launch alongside Magic Leap 1, has been the headset's longest developed game. And now we're going to have a look at how it's going to look like. Check this out and please do let me know what you think of it. And here it is.
Oh, sorry, I just uh, spilled some adult beverage here. <laughs> okay, guys, what do you think? What do you think about that game? So that game, that game that you saw there right now is really going to launch alongside the Magic Leap 1. Please do let me know what, what you think about that game. Fulio says that video is fake. <laughs> Fulio, no, it is real. It is true. J Rod is here. J Rod, thanks for <laughs> putting in your mobile phone number. It's not going to be abused. <laughs> I don't have it anyways. It's at Discord now. <laughs> Pinnacle rising. I hope you didn't spill it on your SCC vibe. <laughs> that is so funny. Uh, yeah, now you know what really happened with that SCC vibe. <laughs> Okay, Mixstar says um, there is 12 major games leaked for launch. All right. Okay, cool. I says for the win says that's not an actual demo. It's just a video. They made it with CG. Yeah. Well, I read that actually they they did not use CG for that for that particular demo. But anyways, if it looks anything like what we've seen right now, then I find it pretty unbelievable. Pretty incredible, I mean, pretty incredible. Like the way that this guy was taking the gun and how it looked perfectly as if it was there in real. That is really crazy, I think. What do you guys think about it? The way how he took the gun and it seemed like it was really there. I think that's pretty unbelievable. And this guy didn't wear any gloves or anything. Everything was just with with this uh, incredible uh, Magic Leap 1 technology. And Brandon says, it seems technically possible. I think so too. So Rendoon says, yes, the AR looks pretty cool. I think so too. So definitely this is something really interesting. And I believe that we can be very, very excited about Magic Leap 1. Looks great. J Rod, the gun was the gun was overlaid onto a physical object known as totem. All right. So you just grab the physical object. All right. Okay. I says for the win. I think it's possible. It's real, but the grabbing mechanics was definitely fake, and they used the prop to really sell the effect. Could be. Could could very well be. But if it's anything like that. If it's anything like that, it's going to blow our minds. Just think about the possibilities. <laughs> and I'm not even thinking about adult entertainment. <laughs> it is crazy. It is really, really crazy. And you can buy the guns at the Weta shop, really? Wow. <laughs> Randoon. Sure, sure, Sebastian. <laughs> yes. Fail runner, I think it was made by aliens. <laughs> this is really unbelievable. So 2018 could be the year that our minds get totally blown. More blown than our minds are already blown by the likes of Oculus Rift, HTC Vive and Samsung Odyssey. So it's going to be crazy. Yes, Pinnacle Rising says, it's a great time to be alive, and I totally agree with you. <laughs> Zubitron, am I going to try out War Thunder in mixed reality? You asked me that already, right? In the chat. I don't know. Is it so good? Should I try it out? <laughs> Aliens. Exactly precision. 
it's free to play. Okay, Zubitron, good. Then probably I can check it out. All right, so that was a kind of interesting news about AR, right? But we have more. So the next news item is about Ghostbusters World turns your smartphone into an AR proton pack. So I think most of us like Ghostbusters, yeah? So it was one of my teenager cinema experiences that I loved. I loved Ghostbusters. And now an AR game is coming out. And I think it has promise. It has promised to be, at least for me, to be more interesting than the Pokemon AR game. Let's go to have a look at the trailer. And yes, Rendoon, who are you gonna call? <laughs> Ghostbusters. Okay, let's have a look at that trailer. <laughs> Yes, so it looks really cool and I, th I, I believe there's so much potential. Just think about it. So in um, in the Pokemon AR game, you had to go out, you had to go find those monsters. But in, in, in this game, well, you have to go out and find those ghosts. It's so interesting. Just think about it. Like, um, yeah, probably you can even team up with some buddies and you're going to go out and try to catch them together. And uh, your your phone is going to be your proton pack with which you're going to um, catch those ghosts. I think that's pretty cool. So, um, yeah, what do you guys think about um, this game? Are you going to get it once it's out? Do you think it could be as successful as the Pokemon game, do you think it could be so, it could go so viral? Like I can just tell you from my perspective, I would get that game over the Pokemon game. So the Pokemon game, I also downloaded, I gave it one try, but then I stopped because I'm not a big Pokemon fan. But, but uh, yeah, this, what do you think? Would you going to get it? Brandon's gonna get it. Yeah, me too. Better than Pokemon, exactly, right? Rendoon thinks Pokemon Go was a bit of a fat. Yeah, it could be. So, yeah. Ghostbusters. Next news item. Or do you still want to say something about Ghostbusters? PD, PD says probably will be better than the latest movie. I haven't even watched the movie. I should watch the latest movie. Zubitron loves the stream so far. Great. I also really enjoy every Saturday. This show is getting bigger and bigger. My goal was to get 50 viewers at the same time. And I think at the top we were at 80. So incredible. Thank you for, for watching this show. It's so much fun every Saturday. Love it. Brennan says the target audience won't have the numbers of Pokemon though. Yeah, could be, could be. All right, let's go to the next news item. So Amazon launches its AR product viewer for AR Core. Online retailing giant Amazon is making some big strides in augmented reality this week with the launch of its AR view option in its Android app. Let's have a look at the trailer as well here. Picturing your new space can be a challenge. AR View in the Amazon app lets you see how different items will look before you buy them. So you can see what works. You can view items you've placed from any angle.
and make sure they match your style and decor. And when you finally have things the way you want them, you can start planning for whatever comes next. Oh, yes. I love it. I think it's incredible. I'm a big fan of Amazon. I really, I use the Alexa. I use, I, I buy all my stuff on Amazon. I'm just such a big Amazon fan. It's uh, the convenience. It's how everything works. It's the, the customer service, like how you can easily return everything. And they really make you a happy customer. Unlike STC <laughs> to get back to that. But I really, I'm a big fan of Amazon. What about you guys? Do you like Amazon? If yes, please say yes on the live chat. So yes, exactly guys. Yes, exactly. I totally agree with you guys. So um, what do you guys think about this app and about this AR thing that they're introducing here right now? So what do you guys say? Yeah, Elias Souls, nice. Proud dog. This is what IKEA did, exactly. And uh, yeah, Rendoon says, actually looks pretty cool. Brandon, how good is current technology? This is awesome. Totally agreed with you, Brandon. Oh yeah, Rendoon. Just imagine that with the magic leap glasses. Exactly, Rendoon. So you know what? The thing is, this is incredible. I know I'm going to use it. So I buy from Amazon all the time and sometimes I don't know. Should I go for the white color? Should I go for the black color for the Amazon Echo or for any of the things that I'm buying on Amazon? So now I can simply check it out through my smartphone. And as you all know, this is only going to be the first stage of AR, this kind of smartphone thing where you have to look through the smartphone, the next escalation is definitely the glasses, right? So we are all going to have AR glasses. Let's face it, just as we all are having smartphones now, we are all going to have AR glasses. Then in the future, we're going to have AR contact lenses, but I'm sure that all of us are going to have AR glasses within the next three years. Yes, within the next three years, you, Proud Dog, you, Rendoon, you, Zubitron, you, Fail Runner, you, Elias Souls, you, Brandon, you're going to have smart AR glasses. And it's going to be so good because, well, the ecosystem is now growing with those uh, mobile phone apps, like, like now, but it's going to be super easy for them to port it to the glasses. So yeah, it's going to be like um, I'm in my room, I'm looking around and I'm, I want to buy a new sofa or I want to buy a new Amazon Alexa or anything and I just see it in the environment and I will choose the color, I will choose whatever needs to be chosen and then I buy it through the AR glasses. And Amazon is so smart, they are so looking into the future by introducing this right now, they are going to win. I'm a big fan of Amazon. And I believe this is without a doubt going to be the future. What do you guys think? Just makes sense. <laughs> Ilya Souls, you, you're going to have AR glasses. AR lenses, AR glasses will be widely used in the future. Yeah, so you guys, you totally agree. Yeah? Yes. <laughs> Commander Hayden Shaw. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> precision says, I will have one in the future. And you must know that Precision beat me in Sprint Vector for one second. Push the button says, waiting for sunglasses for AR. Yes, absolutely gonna happen without a doubt. Score, I wanna buy 
the Samsung Odyssey, but my Dell visor was very narrow where it was clear. All the sides were blurry. Yeah, that's definitely much better on the Samsung Odyssey. You have a much bigger sweet spot and everything's going to be better. Score. <laughs> Admiral Akbar, are you retiring from Sprint Vector? No, Admiral Akbar, I'm not retiring from Sprint Vector, but I'm going to have a little break now. At least one week. <laughs> Randoon, sp speaking of Sprint Vector, what is your best time? My best time is 46 seconds, which is pretty good. <laughs> yeah, Brandon says, maybe when sweating doesn't cost as much. Yes, exactly. Push the button. Will Apple do it? AR sunglasses? Push the button. Apple will definitely do AR glasses. If they're going to have sunglasses, yeah, probably they will. Uh, it would make sense. Rendoon, 46 seconds is good, yeah, it is. I had to train very much and one HTC Vive died in the process. Zubitron can make graphics for free, that's cool. Okay guys, good, let's go to the next news item now. So, now we're going to the software part of this show. And we still have 55 viewers, still over the thing that I wanted to reach. Awesome. So this is this is the um, the review, the upload VR review of Island 359. Island 359. Dinosaurs are finally terrifying again. Let's have a look at the trailer and do let me know what you think of the trailer in the chat. Wow, <laughs> it looks pretty cool, right? And well, I had heard from Island 359 before. They had been in that uh, preview mode on Steam and you could get it already. And well, actually you could al also have like full body tracking if you bought the HTC <laughs> trackers. So yeah, that was pretty interesting. And it's on sale right now, says Admiral Akbar. Is it true? How much is it, Admiral? How expensive is this game? So, anyways, let's have a look at um, what Upload says. So, <laughs> Upload says, positives, huge six square mile island to explore. Good, sounds good. Beautifully detailed environment. I think most of us could agree that this is something interesting. Variety and addictive game modes. I kind of like addictive game modes. What about you? Terrifying dinosaurs. Yeah, I love Jurassic Park. Sounds pretty awesome, right? It sounds like really something that I should probably check out. Okay, it costs 23 Canadian dollars. Negatives. Gets a little repetitive after a while. Some game modes feel like filler. 
Lack of real structured narrative. Okay. Let's see what is their final conclusion from Upload VR. Wow, okay. Final score 8.5 of 10, great. That is pretty incredible. Almost two years removed from the launch window of the Oculus Rift and HTC Vive, Island 359, a game that's been in early access for almost just as long, has evolved from its humble beginnings into a shining example of not only quality VR gaming, but how to improve a project while in early access. The iterated on the they iterated on what worked and expanded in areas that were lacking until Island 359 became just as polished as it was ambitious. It's still not for everyone, but fans of the tense action games, shooters and hardcore survival games owe it to themselves to get lost in the lush jungles of Island 359. Wow, that is pretty incredible. What do you think of it? So I think this is a game that I should definitely check out for you. Probably do some live gaming for you guys on the channel. What do you What do you think? Should I check out this game live for you? I mean, not now, but in the future, because now in every week I'm going to check out one game more in detail in a live stream. So yeah, right? I should check this out. Let me know if you want me to check this out for you guys. It sounds pretty good. Elia Soul says yes. And Pinnacle Rising, I would watch the live stream. Zubitron for sure. Okay, good. Yeah, I think it's a game that I should definitely check out for you guys. It sounds pretty awesome. And yeah, why not? Dinosaurs in VR. Reminds Randoon of Carnivores on PC. Yeah. Yeah, so Island 359. Not bad, not, not bad, not bad. 18 euro and 39 cents. El Rimo from Germany says, great, yeah, cool. Okay, I'm going to invest that money to show you guys how this game plays. Okay, I'm going to let you guys know if this works on Windows Mixed Reality. Okay, I'm going to make this video for you guys. It's a promise. Let's go to the next news item. <laughs> Brandon says, as long as you don't get stuck protecting father's tower again, you're right, you're right. That was my, my first live stream on this channel. It was kind of funny. Good. The next news item is... Wow. Moss. And you just saw it has a score of 9 of 10, which means amazing. Incredible. So Moss is a new game for the PlayStation VR. And it, and it seems to be awesome. I've seen some, some YouTubers play it and... Like uh, Nady said, like, oh, it's incredible, loved it. And all the reviews so far have been unbelievably good. How about we look at the trailer of Moss together now? And here you go. Your time has come at last, dear reader. But this story is not yours alone. No, it is tied to another. The dark would fall before me With broken bow and blackened leaf I stand where dreams meet with the sky and in the stillness find you by When all the paths are overgrown And evening falls with crimson glow Into the forest I go And in its shadow find
bond with Quill grows strong. And the journey you take together could change the fate of both our worlds. Shall we begin? Yeah, so this is the trailer of Moss, and I think we can all agree it does look really, really nice. I still, I'm not sure how this can be like so fa fascinating. I have to play it, right? So I simply have to, I really have to check it out myself, and I need to let you see that. Probably I'm going to live stream Moss, and probably I'm going to live stream um, Island uh, 359 on Twitch. I'm going to let you guys know when I do so here on the MRTV Discord server. I did not buy the game yet, but um, probably I should. Yes, I have a PSVR. I have all P I have all VR systems, and I do believe that, um, yeah, as a I, I should also show you guys some PSVR stuff. If it's like it seems to be so good, it seems to be so so good. Um, when we look at the reviews of other VR YouTubers and also the review here of Upload VR, let's have a look at what they say. So, positives. Beautifully realized storybook world. Okay. Fantastic sense of presence alongside Quill. Oh, that's, a, that's really interesting. I really wonder how they made it work that you feel like so present within the game. Satisfying puzzles and combat encounters. Okay, so they have puzzles and combat encounters. Excellent DualShock 4 tracking interactions. Guys, I can totally not imagine how this is so great. But I will, of course, definitely give it a try. It it's, uh, sounds like so interesting. So again, if you have a PS4, get the PSVR. There is really no way around it. They have so many cool exclusives. Just for Skyrim, it is worth it. Skyrim is unbelievably good in VR. And uh, also Farpoint with the aim controller. It's out of this world. This is such a fantastic immersion. So if you have a PS4 or if you can get a cheap one, get a PSVR. It's so cheap right now and it's really fun just to play the exclusive. So, this seems to be really, really good. Negatives feels a little short and some puzzles aren't clearly communicated. So um, let's have a look at the, at the conclusion. The conclusion of this is one moment, let me just check something here. Yeah. Okay, so Upload VR gives this one a 9 out of 10. Wow. A 9 out of 10. Amazing. Moss is the hidden gem that PSVR never knew it needed. Wow. From the first moment we played the game at E3, almost a year ago until we saw the closing credits roll, Quill's adventure has captivated our hearts and minds. Wow. Moss strikes that perfect balance between tense, action-packed moments of combat with slow, metho methodical puzzles that require you to rethink the way you interact with video games through the power of VR. Oh my god. Polyarch has crafted one of PSVR's most essential games to date. Moss is available now exclusively for PSVR on the PSN store. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Wow. What do you think about it? I mean, it sounds so good, right? Should I live stream this game next to Island 359 just to show you the game? Please do let me know in the stream. Live stream Moss. Yes, okay. Yep, Brandon also, and Island359, yeah, I think, yes, okay, guys, I think for next week I'm going to stream Island359 
and Moss. So yeah, I mean, you guys are all already on the MRTV Discord server. So I'm going to let you know once I stream this there on Twitch. So please, for all of you who are not yet on the MRTV Discord server, please go there. It is an incredible resource. You can chat with me and the MRTV community and it's a great community. Really, really the, the best, in my opinion, VR community that you can find on the interwebs. Okay. Now let's go to the next and War Thunder Zubitron. <laughs> I will have a look at it. The next news item now is we have another software. Okay. Crisis on the planets of the apes coming to PSVR Rift and Vive very soon. Okay. Having stormed the cinema with its latest trilogy, the apes are setting their sights on a new platform, VR. Crisis on the Planet of the Apes is a full VR game developed by the new Fox Next VR studio. It's a first person shooter in which, yes, you play as one of the intelligent apes that rises up to form a new civilization on Earth. The game is set in between Rise of the Planet of the Apes and Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and sees you trying to escape from a detention facility in which humans are experimenting on you in search of a cure. All right. <laughs> Let's have a look at the trailer. And here we go. They found us. Kill us, but we will never give up. Fight with us. Crisis on the Planet of the Apes VR, coming April 3rd. Yeah, I'm back now. <laughs> Faded to black. No, I'm back. I'm back here. Yeah, unfortunately, I spilled all of the beers, so I cannot have some more. And uh, in Germany, we have a saying. It goes like this. It, uh, the saying is, Lieber Frau und Kind erschießen als das gute Bier vergießen. And the meaning is, you better shoot your wife and kids instead of spilling the good beer. But unfortunately, I did it. So there is no more beer here for me. Um, yeah, so what do you what do you guys think about uh, what do you guys think about um, this trailer? <laughs> Rendoon, that's kind of dark. No, that's the German hu humor, I think. <laughs> so Pinnacle Rising says the low price scares him. Yeah, you're right. You're right, the low price scares him. Yeah, $15. And probably it's just $15 because it's so short. Probably yes. So I don't know. I don't know, we'll have to wait for the reviews and probably I will review this as well. And probably I will just play it for you guys, right? If once it's out, it depends on what what games you guys want to see so we will see no idea yet if you guys want me to play it live i will probably play it and then we'll see okay guys let's go to the next news item and it's another software news so the news is Rec Room gets new Isle of Lost Skulls quest alongside substantial update. And yeah, this news is about the new quest which is called Isle of Lost Skulls. And I had early access to this game and I played it like two days before 
it came out with Rolls and Fishy from the MRTV Discord server and it rocked. It was just so much fun. Loved it. Just loved it. It was so good. And um, yeah, for all of you who don't know yet Rec Room, Rec Room is the best multiplayer game that you can find on VR right now. It's free. You can play paintball, laser tag, you can play those quests. And now you can also play, yeah, this quest here, um, the, the pirate theme quest that you can play with two other people. And it's simply awesome. It is simply so much fun. And Brennan also thinks it's uh, awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's great. So if you don't, if you have never played Rec Room, you need to download it right now, right away, because it is simply incredible. So please, please get Rec Room. The new quest is fantastic. It's super tough. It is uh, pirate themed. You will have like, like swords, and you will have like these guns that can only shoot twice. It is simply great and you need to play it as soon as possible. <laughs> Just don't sweat there, yeah? <laughs> okay, guys, that's it. That was MRTV Live episode number seven. I really hope that you enjoyed it. It was a two hour show, 30 minutes longer than the average MRTV Live show. And it was 30 minutes longer because I was ranting about HTC <laughs> for quite some time in the very beginning. And um, yeah, did you enjoy the live show? Please do let me know on the server, uh, on the MRTV server. And I hope, I really hope that you enjoyed it as much as I did. If yes, give it a thumbs up, of course. I really loved this live stream. It is the record live stream. We had 80 at the, at the pinnacle of this live stream. I think we had 80, 80 concurrent people watching this. This is so fantastic. Thank you so much for watching this live stream. It seems like you also enjoy MRTV Live. It's uh, yeah the most important show here on Mixed Reality TV. I uh, hope you're going to stick to this channel tell other people about Mixed Reality TV. As you know, I put my full passion into this channel. Here you, you get unbiased reviews about hardware, about software. I'm going to tell you when some customer service sucks. I love this and I love that this channel is growing so fast. So please do let other people know about Mixed Reality TV. If you have some friends who are into VR and AR, let them know about MRTV. Uh, yeah, this is a very, very fast growing channel. My next big goal is to get 10,000 um, subscribers. Um, we are on the best way. I think we have like 6,700 now and it's, yeah, it's growing really, really fast. Yeah, 10K, 10K subscribers. That is the big goal. Please help me to reach that goal. Tell as many people as possible, share my HTC Vive customer service video to help HTC get better at customer service. And yeah, let's reach that together. Let's become a really important VR and AR channel. I, I really think we can do it. And I'm so grateful to have all of you here during this live show and so happy that you enjoy my content and that you enjoy these live shows. I love this. And I want to, together with you, I, want, I would like to go through this, these exciting times that are now upon us with VR, with AR coming in this year. I want to kind of, yeah, be your mate on this incredible journey until the moment in time when we put that contact lenses in our eyes and have the perfect AR future. So until that moment in time, I would like to be your companion. Probably at that moment in time, I will be an old man. And my last video will be putting those AR contact lenses in my eyes and then I'm going to stop the channel. <laughs> if that happens earlier, then probably I'm going to wait until we have that um, connection directly into our brains. Who knows? Who knows? 
great. So again, thank you for being here. I love that live stream. It's tough for me now to say goodbye <laughs> because I really enjoy this so much. And yes, push the button says waiting for the Pimax. Exactly. It's March already. And I'm going to get the Pimax 8K as one of the very first people on this planet Earth. And yeah, once I get it, you will definitely get to know about it. And again, at the end of this live stream, I would like to um, tell all of the people, all of the people who are now on the YouTube chat and who are not yet on the MRTV Discord server, why don't you come over to the MRTV Discord server? I'm there, we can chat, and it's really, really a fantastic community. All right, guys, this is really it. Now the next thing is going to, going to happen. We're going to change to the multiplayer um, channel on the MRTV Discord server. And we're going to talk about what we're going to play together. Because part of this live stream is that afterwards, we're going to spend some time in a multiplayer game. Probably it's going to be Rec Room. I'm going to let you know all the details in like 10 minutes after I've calmed down a bit. And yeah, we're going to play a game together. For all of you who want to join it, you're all free to join. Please go to the MRTV Discord server, go to the multiplayer channel and let's play a game together. All right, that's it for this stream. Hope you enjoyed it. If yes, give it a thumbs up. And of course, if you have not subscribed to Mixed Reality TV yet, do so now. I'm looking forward to see you in the next episode. Bye.